Investigators are still searching for the reason why eight-year-old Imani McCray took her own life this month. McCray was found hanged in her bedroom. So far, there's no evidence of her being bullied, but investigators believe McCray's actions could have been influenced by reading stories about Ashwanti Davis on social media. Davis, a fifth grader in Colorado, hanged herself after a fight video of her surfaced online. Davis's parents say bullying was to blame. In the case of eight-year-old Gabrielle Tay received national attention after his mom says, G Gabriel says bullying drove him to commit suicide. Tay hanged himself after a brutal fight on school grounds left him unconscious for several minutes. Joining us right now are psychologist Dr. Jeffrey Gardia via Skype from New York. Uh, Jeff, I mean, it, it's stunning to, to read these stories uh, and seeing our young kids, eight and 10 and 12, killing themselves over bullying and fighting in school. Well, we're seeing that uh, the suicide rates are increasing dramatically, Roland. Uh, between 2009 and 2015, almost 36% of all teens feel desperate, sad, or hopeless. But here's what's really stunning. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, um, suicide rates for black youth remain not only consistent in 2015, but doubled for black youth within the last 20 years. So they are the hardest hit right now. What does a parent say? What does a, how does a parent deal with this? What, what do they say to their eight-year-old, their 10-year-old? Well, sadly and realistically, parents are in shock and they don't say anything. Uh, all they can do is uh, grieve, uh, go through the process of separation, uh, they feel a tremendous amount of guilt because they feel that uh, perhaps they have missed the signs or maybe there was more they could have done. But eventually, you're right. They have to have that conversation and to be able to scan the remaining children, the survivors, to make sure that they are also uh, dealing with this properly and don't have a pre-existing uh, history themselves of some sort of depression, which is what we see in 90% of these cases. Kids just don't kill themselves in this way just because of bullying or just because of the internet. Those are very strong comorbid factors, but there is also some sort of a mental health issue that has not been detected, especially when we're talking about childhood depression. Monique. So what are some of the signs that a parent can look for to know the difference between a child who's just having a rough time at school and is sad about it and a child who's living with and battling depression? Are there things they can do with at their pediatrician appointments or is this an issue because they're not getting pediatrician appointments in the poor communities? What What's the story? Well, that's an excellent question because pediatricians in many ways also fill the double role of being child psychologists or child psychiatrists. So certainly they are trained to look at the maturational levels, milestones being hit by the kids to make sure that they are uh, psychologically, emotionally healthy. But certainly I, I think the most consistent thing that parents see is that the children become isolated in a very consistent manner. Uh, either they have very few friends or they only stick to one or two two friends, um, and a lot of the things that they used to do before they became depressed, they just stopped doing. But you see a tremendous amount of sadness, loneliness, and again, that isolation. That tells you something is wrong. It's not just about a brooding teenager or a teenager going through some sort of a phase, because many teenagers uh, really are very dependent on being around other people. Socialization is something that is important. So once you see the opposite of that, that tells you something is going on with your child. Don't wait for them to get through it. Have consistent, many conversations. And as you said, again, take your child to a pediatrician or maybe even to someone like myself, a child psychologist, who can at least check and see whether there's something that needs to be addressed. Depression amongst children is rampant. It's not just a thing of they're too young for this. You're never too young enough for depression to surface in one's life. Yeah, but, but doctor, if I may, this is just terribly uh, draining emotionally for parents, I'm sure, but can you explain how and can an eight-year-old uh, get to the emotional decision conceptually to just take their life? I mean, it's hard enough for adults to get to that point. Uh, we know most don't, but those that do commit it. But an eight-year-old, I can't, as a parent, I can't get my arms around how that 
child gets to that decision. Can you share a little bit more on that? Well, uh, it's a decision, of course, that we know is not the right decision. Sure. And we know with eight-year-olds, with children, their brains are not fully developed. So if something catastrophic does happen, uh, especially something with extreme bullying or cyberbullying, uh, they may see that as the end of the world and as part of the social media, and this is not to vilify social media, it does have its uses, of course, uh, we see that there is contagion. Uh, they see other kids are doing this uh, who may be uh, slightly older, and then they feel that now they can do the same thing because someone else has done it. The possibility of that, which was not a possibility in the past, now becomes their reality. That social media is so strong as far as uh, uh, showing them that certain things can be done which are absolutely wrong, it can overwhelm them and now they feel they have the power to do that. But I think in some of these cases, and not to blame the parents in any particular way, not at all, um, I think with eight-year-olds, others who may be doing this, uh, somehow we as parents, and again, not blaming these parents, but we as parents are missing the mark. Mm -hmm. And we have to mm -hmm. understand it's not just about <clears throat> their getting through it on their own, but guiding them as parents. I take, I take this very seriously because when we talk about mental health, especially in the black community, there are a lot of stigmas and there's a lot of silence that comes along with having these conversations. And the decision and the mental health that these kids are going through at 8, 10 years old, and even as they're getting older, Marshawn, um, a friend of mine in Ohio, committed suicide two years ago in, at the state capitol. And, and to think about the pressures of mm -hmm. white supremacy right now, history in America, and bullying on the campus, Tell me, tell me two things. One, as educators, what is their role in intervention and what are the key things that parents or educators should know when they don't have the, the education to deal with mental health? What are the key terms that we should know that we should or should not be using to assist and support people who are going through or kids who are going through this issue? Well, certainly as educators, uh, we need to be uh, based in reality that racism and prejudice is an extra stressor for our children. Uh, interesting studies have shown John Henryism, uh, where uh, youth who are trying to strive to make it, uh, even when they do, they have twice the amount of stress and physical illness. So certainly, uh, we don't need to put our heads in the sand and think that we're in an equal society. So exactly. educators need to see that as a Dresser. Secondly, as parents, uh, look, children uh, uh, copy us. So as black parents, as a black society, if we're stuck in the stigma of mental illness, of seeing it as weakness, then certainly our children do not feel that they have the space to be able to talk about it. So as we show our children that we do understand that mental illness, uh, problems of living may be real for them, and we as parents are able to deal with our own mental health stresses, our own mental health issues, then certainly our kids will follow us and feel the freedom to be able to talk about this. But again, and Roland, as we've talked about this so much in the past, it's about the continual open communication between parents and kids. Kids are on their own path with social media, and sometimes we see them as another species, but it is important that we be in their lives each and every day as much as they want to push us away. That's a sign that they really want us to be in their lives. Dr. Jeffrey Gardier is always great having you on TV One's News One Now. It's our final show. Uh, your final comments. <coughs> Final comment uh, is certainly thank you, uh, Roland, for once again bringing a spotlight on uh, mental health issues, stigma, and for allowing me to be part of your show and helping people in dealing with their mental health challenges. This is very real. It's tough out there. It's tough to be black, but it's tough in this world. And certainly uh, it's important that we get the attention we need in order to have a better life. Thank you, Roland Martin. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks a bunch.